Padmasambhava is an image of energy. He's, an, he's, a, he's discovered on Lake Donakosha. The lake is a, a symbol for the depth, for the depth of the human heart and the human mind, for the depth of life. And on the top of that depth, you have this eight-year-old boy squirming, wriggling with energy. So we need to contact our energy first. But what does Padmasambhava then do? He's been asked to come to Tibet. He's been invited by the king of Tibet. What does he do? Does he go to the palace? No, he doesn't. What he does is he, does, he goes into Tibet and he goes around Tibet. He goes from one place to another. And where he goes is he goes to the demons. He doesn't go to the palace. He doesn't go, in other words, towards the place of knowledge, of bright ideas, of good intentions, of high-minded aspirations, which you could imagine the palace might represent. He goes to where the demons live. In other words, he goes to where he knows there is problems. So this is what you need to do, and this is what I need to do. You don't need some big visionary ideal at first, perhaps, you already know where your life is a bit of a mess. You already know where there are demons in your life. You know that you need to sort out your relationship with your mother. You know that you keep losing your patience with your children. You know that you're staying up too late on uh, Instagram or whatever it is. You actually, you know your room is a complete mess and you can't ever find anything. You know what, where the demons are. Um, if you're honest with yourself, and if you're learning to be honest with yourself, you know where they are. So that's where you go. You don't go to, I'm going to go to the gym every day, I'm going to meditate every day, I'm then going to read some improving book, I'm going to look out the window and read a poem. You, what you do first is you go to those messy, chaotic, um, uncontrolled places, and you try to do something about that. So what Padmasambhava does, he goes to where the, t the demons are, Interestingly, he has what's called the demon slaying mudra, which is like that. He holds a, a thunderbolt in this demon slaying mudra, uh, sort of like that. Um, interestingly, though, it's called a demon slaying mudra, but he doesn't slay demons. Yeah? He doesn't slay them. And the reason he doesn't slay demons is because you can't slay demons. They're, every time you try and kill them, they grow again. It's like um, cutting the head of a gorgon, you know, you, they just grow again. In all mythologies, if you try and kill demons, you make them stronger, they multiply. And you've had this in your life, haven't you? You try and stop doing those things, you try and keep telling yourself not to do those things, and weirdly, you energize those things. Those, those bad habits you get into where you keep saying, no, 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 I mustn't do that and again, I'm a bad person, you know, maya culpa, maya culpa. Every time you do that, you kind of give those demons energy. This is also true for the world. This is, all of this applies to the world, but we'll come on to that perhaps a bit later. At the moment, I want to talk to you. So, Padmasambhava goes to the demons and he doesn't slay them. Yeah, he doesn't slay them because he can't slay them. What he had, in some images of him, you have in his, in his um, belt around his waist, sometimes it looks a bit like an ice cream, strangely. Um, it, and sometimes it looks like a dagger. What it is, is, is called a purba. And a purba is a tent peg. Yeah? So he's got this tent peg in his belt. And what that does is it pins a demon down. Yeah? It's a brilliant metaphor. A demon is shape-shifting. You know what your demons are like. Your feelings of guilt about this. Your feelings of self-dislike. Your feelings of critic criticism of other people. Your wish to pretend that that wasn't true. They're shapeshifters. They, they, they move around. They sh keep changing shape. You, you can't grasp them. They're shadowy. So the first thing you need to do is pin them down so that you can have a good look at them. Now this is even more important perhaps, or just as important with other people. You know when you're trying to talk to somebody else and it's all going wrong. You're trying your best to communicate and it's all going wrong. You start to feel that this is slightly demonic. What that shows you is you need to stop talking, you need to look more and you need to listen more. What's going on for this person? What's going on in this interaction? I've got two young girls in my life and um, all you need for a child to become demonic is to either eat too much sugar or to be hungry. 
I remember going to uh, Zander's, what was it called? I don't know, one of those, uh, somewhere like that. And um, uh, Rhea, the youngest, she was really hungry. And I could see her becoming a demon. You know, I felt like running into the kitchen and grabbing some chips and giving them to her. Because you know that she goes from a little nine-year-old sweetheart into a demon. Yeah? That's what parents know. They know children can become demons. And what you need to do is do something about that. You need to go there. Yeah? So that's what Padmasambhara does. He doesn't go to the palace of well-meaning. He goes to the demons. He goes to the places that are shape-shifting, that, are, that aren't very um, accessible to reason, that can't be reasoned with, even though we wish we could. And he tries to know them. And what he does in the parable is he finds out their name. He finds their heart. In other words, he, tries, he finds out what's really going on with this demon. What do they need even? What this, is this really about? What is the real issue here? Do you know how sometimes you're talking about something and you think, this isn't the real issue. We could talk about this till the cows come home, but this isn't the real issue. So to pin the demon down, to find out the heart of the demon, is to find out what is really going on here. Only then can you tame them. You know, only then can you integrate the energy of that demon. So what Padmasambhara does is he often gives them a treasure to guard. He either turns them into forces that protect the truth, interestingly, or he neutralizes them, which is interesting in itself. So some of our demons just feels like, tell you what, you're demons from your, your past childhood, from traumas of your childhood. You can't undo that. You can't make that n not to have happened. Sometimes the best you can do is neutralize it by finding strategies where those demons are no longer so disruptive and demonic. Yeah? If you can possibly, you try to find out their name and you give them a treasure. In other words, you can turn things that are demons into gifts. To some degree, I've done that myself in my life. I had a very, very unhappy childhood, I think, and a, an unhappy life. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have wanted that and I wouldn't wish that on anyone. But to some degree, I've been able to take, change that, transform that unhappiness and pain. And heavens, I've been very, very lucky. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm not doting on my unhappy childhood. Um, you know, it's, it's nothing terrible. But to some degree, I've changed it into the jewels of empathy, into the jewels of, I understand that. I've been through that. I've lived that as well. Let's together try and work on that, yeah? So that's what Padmasambhara is like. I mean, I'm not <laughs> trying to say that I'm anything remotely like him, but that's the path I'm treading toward meeting the demon, finding out its name, giving them a treasure to God. Because you're full of treasures. Even some of the most awful things in your life, if you could not but know it, are treasures. So it's a, it seems a disgraceful thing to say. It seems an outrageous thing to say. But you are full of treasures. And the way to discover treasures is not to go to the palace of well-meaning, but to pin down the clithonic, the demonic forces that, that blow through you and blow through society. Find out their name and give them a treasure to hold.